Well, I guess we can get started. Um, we're all grown up, and this is a talk that uh, I'm doing on behalf of Andy Fitzsimon, who couldn't be here for family reasons, but a little bit about me. My name is Robert Sergia. I am the Director of Technical and Community Marketing here at SUSE. Um, I'm an open source com contributor. Uh, I'm a CNCF ambassador, if that means anything to anybody here. <laughs> Does anyone know what that is? No one? I do. You got a winner. Thank you. Um, and I'm an avid hunter. So if anyone just hunt, um, you can talk to me about that. But I'm joined by a special guest, Richard. Well, yes, I'm Richard. You know, I've been doing this open source stuff now for 20 years, as, as Rick mentioned. Um, you know, I'm here not with my SUSE hat on, but with my, my community, you know, hat, open SUSE, how I think that should work. So, Robert, Well, I mean, if we're going to say that. Well, exactly. I'm actually here representing SUSE. So, um, I want to make sure that everyone knows that I'm, you know, professionally, in a professional capacity that I'm presenting this, my side of the deck. Um, you'll see here at, towards the end. Um, as on behalf of SUSE. So let's talk about the history of SUSE. Um, do you guys know this? Do we, do we know this? I know. Um, 32 years, we've stuck with the Geeko, our green chameleon. Um, a few organizations have such a preserved, long-lasting icon, but we've gotten better. I still like the first one. I know it sounds, it looks like my kid drew it, but I think that's why I like it the most. But we've gotten better with it. And I think the open SUSE one is the... open SUSE one's still stuck in the middle, right here. Yeah. Now, is that the old one or the new one? Because I'll talk about that in a moment. But we've gotten better with drawing the, the gecko, the geeko, or the chameleon. And we're actually pretty good at community. I read this. Uh, I didn't know this existed, but this is a case study about Novell and open SUSE. Um, we'll have the link later. but. I didn't know this existed. That was mind-blowing reading this. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if you do ever want to download it, read it. You know, it's a great snapshot of like how messed up everything was back in 2008. Like, you know, we've come a really long way compared to there. But also, it does show like a lot of the thought that we put in back then. Like, you could see how that's built the path that's got us where we are now. Um, and this actually does a really good job of, of like seeing into the future and suggesting this could be where they end up. And we kind of have. I, I read it over beers, um, and I, I, I suggest if you do drink, to read it over beers or wine. Um, but SUSE and Open SUSE as a community, we move kind of in con a constant motion together, right? We stay lockstep. Um, you'll see that with this diagram that Dirk helped me um, correctly put together between Tubbleweed, SUSE Linux Enterprise, and Leap. Um, and the work that we do in Tumbleweed eventually makes its way into Tumbleweed, or the work we do in Tumbleweed eventually makes its way into uh, SLES, and it makes it to Leap as well. Speaking backwards there, I'm sorry. And we have a, a shared path together. This should show you, um, and I know two of those little balls are in the wrong spot. I, I noticed that Kiwi and OBS should be on the other sides, but don't get hung up on that. But we share with SUSE a lot of things we've done together we, between a uni and SUSE manager, um, between uh, Aeon, Kalpa, and uh, SLES, all of these have a shared provenance together. And there's some projects that we use together. OBS is an example of that, right? And we have IBS internally for some of the internal build services yeah. that we have. No difference, just one's internal, one's external, right? Pretty much, yeah. Okay. But I want to say this, that SUSE is committed to the growth of open SUSE community. I want to make sure that I'm on record and it's being recorded, you see me saying it. <laughs> but we have concerns about our brand confusion and the infringement of trademarks. So I want to talk about trademarks. This is a uh, slide about the Sony Walkman. And this, this is about if trademarks are different than copyrights, um, they're more or less a legal recognition of your identity. And you have to use them, or you have to lose them. Defend them, or you lose them. Um, we've heard about Kleenex. Um, some remember that Sony lost this trademark in Austria, because um, the word Walkman became so common it ended up in the dictionary. And they lost that trademark. But that was part of that product. That was what it was called. We all remember this one. If anyone doesn't remember it, um, I'm not saying you were living under a rock in the open source community, but 
Um, Groupon challenged GNOME. Now, GNOME won. Groupon backed down, but it cost them money. And one thing about open source communities like this is money is hard to come by at times. We can all agree on that. But it still costs them money because, you know, someone out there just doesn't, it wasn't noticed. And then there's this one. This slide is, I don't want to say it's controversial, but someone bought, you know, they inherited this IP. Um, Oracle has been vicious with their defense of the term JavaScript. I'm not sure if I'm even legally allowed to say that on stage. Um, but they've defended that, and they have every right to do so. But it puts us as a community who does anything with JavaScript on the back burner. We can't, we can't put it out there. You can't do anything with it because they own it. And it really stinks for communities. And this is a negative example for it. But SUSE is concerned about the genericization of the SUSE brand and the combined breadth of SUSE and over SUSE offerings. And they're hard to define and defend. Whereas OpenSUSE, we can all agree we're here for community. We build the same things together. We have a shared underlying common goal of contributing, building amazing open source software. But SUSE is focused on the enterprise not necessarily community users. So we remember this. Um, this started out really bad. Um, I was a Red Hat fanboy when I was in college. Uh, 7.1 was my first distro. And I remember when this happened. And it was a few years before it got better. But now, if we look at this, it's hard to argue that Fedora isn't a vibrant community, that Fedora is healthy and is expanding. And Red Hat, they're doing just fine over there with their brand. And then we remember this. Who said, ugh, thank you? This is what we don't want, right? This is, what, this is the worst case scenario. This is worse than I believe what the Oracle won. So I'm not going to delve deeper into this because this story everyone in this room should know. But this didn't work out great for Docker. It didn't work out great for Moby. Um, and this isn't anything anyone wants, especially here with OpenSUSE. So we've been listening to the community. And we had some conversations from folks all around. Um, and it's become more than just one-offs. It's become you know, kind of a constant um, conversation. But with anything, we have distractions and we have um, detractions. And sometimes people will say, well, is, am I working for SUSE? Is this free work for them? Is this only for SUSE employees? Uh, could I sponsor or attend? You know, these are some of the distractions and detractions that we have with this shared brand that we have. So how do we see it? This is upstream to us, whereas in OpenSUSE, this is where we develop. For SUSE, this is where customers consume. Um, we're free for the community. For SUSE, we pay, pay subscriptions. We have a problem-centric collaboration or commercial sales service agreements. It sounds like nothing open SUSE on that, on that one on the, uh, let's say, right side. It's backwards for me. Um, but at the end, upstream's for all individuals, and SUSE is really for commercial entities, right? That's what we focus on. So the idea for discussion is this. The community voted for this logo. I like it personally. Um, you, you, it grew on you, didn't it? Okay, that's good. Yeah. I like it. Okay, just making sure. Well, we voted. Does, is that yours? <laughs> we got we, we to talk. I want to thank you for this afterwards. Okay, you, me, I'll buy you a beer. But the community voted for this, and it was the open process. Um, the votes came in. There's a little hiccups in the community, but we voted on it. And I think it's good. It's a direction forward. It separates us looking like SUSE. It makes open SUSE have kind of its, start having its own identity. But it could be this. Where's the gasp? Who's gasping? Okay. Some like this. But if you look it up, it's actually not one other operating system. It's actually two different other operating systems. I did some research. Did you know that? You didn't know that. Yeah, I actually did some Googling on that, right? But it's kind of
kind of time that we get a, our own name. We're upstream from Sousa, and maybe it's about time that we have the conversation about having our own name for this organization. So this is a conversation only. Nothing is set in stone. I want to make sure I'm clear about that. But we wanted to talk about, you know, what it would look like to give OpenSUSE a new name. There's no timelines, but what's really important is the community's input. This is not something that should be done in the back room. It's not Doug's decision, even though I think he wants to have it. Um, the, we need the input across the entire community. So all ideas are welcome. Uh, we'll be able to answer questions after this, and you guys know how to find me around the conference. So I'm going to wrap up my end of this, and I'm going to turn it over to my dear colleague. Thank you, Robert. You just hit the space bar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I was actually sort of totally independent of this, sort of from the SUSE side, um, thinking about this purely from a community open SUSE perspective. Like, so um, yeah, this bit is not representing SUSE, but you know. <laughs> In the community, which we've all been in for so long, you know, we see many of the same things just through a different lens, right? You know, we, we have the same distraction and detraction problem, you know, which open, just even internally with OpenSUSE, not even taking into account the SUSE side of things, you know, which OpenSUSE should I use? You know, there's more than four different Linux distros now, and I know I'm adding one as well, so I make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the, you know th that also you know leads to. There's also detraction because the community path for those different distros is different. You know, I can contribute anything I want to Tumbleweed, but if I want to go changing stuff in Leap that comes from Slee, I, I can't. And of course, you know, anyone who goes to a big conference, you know, you mentioned you're working on OpenSUSE, and they go, "Oh, you still exist," you know, or you know, even more cutting, you know, asking the niche, you know, why why is OpenSUSE so niche? And if you take a step back and kind of look at OpenSUSE in view, you can kind of get it, right? Like, if you shove all of our projects on one piece of paper, what do these actually have in common? You know, yes, Leap is derived from Slee, which is derived from Tumbleweed, but like, there's a SUSE product in the middle of all of that. MicroOS has a really different story for what, you know, what is the ideal user, how do you use it, how do you document it? Aeon has a different story of, for that as well. The build service is multi-distro. Kiwi is multi-distro. You know, these ones don't even shove OpenSUSE in front of their name. Are they even OpenSUSE projects? Like I've asked guys on, in, in the, some of these projects, you know, are, do you consider yourselves an OpenSUSE project? And they're like, maybe. Uh, you know, yeah. You know, that's, that's tricky when you're to, to trying to think of, okay, how do you go out to the world with this and, and kind of, you know, and, and sell a, get, get a good, a good story and drag people in. And also when people come in, like they come in with the right expectations and the right mindset so they get involved more easily and get, yeah, say the right things, get happy, you know, less arguing on mailing lists, you know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and like looking at this, the, you know, I was thinking, like, where else do we have, like, a ginormous umbrella of thousands of open source projects, you know, so where it's even worse than us? And, like, how do they structure themselves to kind of get around that issue? And, you know, if you think about it, like, the CNCF on, on, the, on the Kubernetes side of things, you know, does a really good job with that. You know, there is, if, I mean, I wanted this to be, like, the slide of the CNCF landscape. You can Google it and have a look. That you, a couple of years ago, that used to fit on one slide. If I try to fit that on now of how many projects are under the CNCF, it's like eight slides. I can't make it smaller than that. It's ridiculous. But nobody talks about the CNCF as the unified brand. You know, where they're not all CNCF Kubernetes and CNCF Helm and whatever. Every project under that umbrella has their own brand, their own name, you know, their own story to tell because they're all different projects. But there is this sort of unifying governance umbrella on the top, providing things like common resources, funding, trademark protection, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, for OpenSUSE, I would like to kind of take SUSE's suggestion of, you know, OpenSUSE no longer using the OpenSUSE mark and tuning up the brand, and kind of take it a little bit of a step sideways. 
you know, I think we should stop using OpenSUSE everywhere. I think it's actually bad for OpenSUSE generally, even you know, excluding SUSE's need there too. And I think we've got projects like Tumbleweed and Leap and MicroOS and hopefully Aeon, OpenQA, et cetera, who all have names and brands of their own, which would be the perfectly valid way of going forward. You know, drop OpenSUSE from them, talk about them as individual things, maybe shove Linux after some of them so, you know, Google search results work better. But I would actually argue that would really solve a lot of our SEO problems with stuff anyway, because right now you search OpenSUSE whatever and you quite often end up getting the wrong answer for the wrong distro than the one you're actually using. Pardon? Yeah, exactly. You know, lots of, yeah, and you get adverts from Rocky Linux. Yeah, so I think, I think in terms of branding, like this is actually the perfect way to go forward. It's less work than renaming everything Geekos. You know, it's less, it's less work of re messaging. It's actually cleaner for us to message if like, okay, we're focusing the story around Tumbleweed and we focus the story around Leap. And, you know, however, you know, there is still then, okay, what do you call about the kind of governance umbrella on top of the whole thing? So I would say, you know, we can probably take the, the Geekos idea and kind of create our own CNCF like little umbrella over the top of all of these projects to provide things like trademark protection or, you know, trademark negotiation with SUSE, however that wants to work out. You know, shared policies, shared code of conduct. So, you know, in the individual projects might be responsible for implementing all of those things. But, you know, we all kind of agree on common stuff because I don't think anybody thinks our current policies are that bad. Shared funding, sponsorship, TSPs, stuff like that and shared resources and infrastructure. But I think, like, if we go down this road, there's, like, it's also a good chance for us to think as a project of, like, really tuning up the, the governance story of how would you want this to work. You know, I, I would argue there's a definite case to be made that instead of having kind of a broadly voted board like we have right now, you know, having a board that is actually more representative of the child projects is probably a better way to go. You know, have, have a representative Tumbleweed on there, have a representative Leap. You know, make sure that the, the governing body is taking the needs of, you know, the actual contributors directly um, and, and focusing far more on that. Having stronger processes and also being better at keeping to the, pro like the project's own rules about what the board should do. Like, we constantly have situations of the board reinterpreting their mandate and doing stuff that they shouldn't. Um, so, yeah, a good chance to do all of that. But just like with Robert, this is a conversation starting only. You know, there's also no timeline. I think this is really the best way forward. Um, and in fact, because I think it's the best way forward, I've already kind of started doing it with Aeon. So I'm dropping open OpenSUSE from the website there. So you can kind of get a feel for how it, how it works, how it thinks but that doesn't mean everybody else has to follow along. So, Q&A. And I know there's no way no one has at least one yeah, question. Yeah, there's bound to there's be questions. no yes, way. So. David. Oh. <laughs> you don't want to talk anymore? Why are you using Mac OS? Why am I using Mac OS? <laughs> That's a good. That's a great question. Uh, that's okay. That's okay. When I started, that is what I was issued, and in three years, I'm supposed to get a new one. But they told me I have to wait till next year to get a new one. It's, yeah, it's a Mac. It's probably not going to be nice. If it was a Dell, it would be easier. But it's a good question. Thank you. It's an Intel Mac, right? It is an Intel Mac. You have no excuse. Okay, thank you. <laughs> yeah, from, yeah, from my side, it's a bad move um, for our known distros. Yeah, for OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and OpenSUSE Leap. Okay. We would 
it is the loss of brand. Yeah? And we are struggling to be visible in the market anyway, and renaming or dropping parts of the name will make them even lesser known. Mm -hmm. yeah? So we'll, we might even use, uh, lose more users. So there are, people know that they are associated with SUSE. This is probably not the case, I mean, it's not the case for the open build service that no longer has, that doesn't use the open SUSE in its name. Would you? Or would open QA doesn't use it directly in the name. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But Leap and Tumbleweed as our most prominent distributions, mm -hmm. yeah, we might lose uh, attention from the outside. Do you feel that you've lost attention being in the shadow of SUSE? No, because Zuse contributes the most pieces of it. Uh, okay. So. Yeah. Hi. Um, yeah. First of all, please. Um, yeah. <laughs> please don't take my first comment personal, if you can. Um, I am very much in favor of uh, of the idea of separating the brands, because okay. Zuse, for me, actually has not many positive connotations. Um, I, I, appreciate it, yeah. I appreciate your opinion. <laughs> huh? um, it stands for Enterprise Linux, which is okay, but not really community, I think. Not, not in my, not what I feel like. Um, it uh, stands for a website that has the, mo the, the one of the biggest collections of third-party tracking software that I know of, and I think it should be separated. I don't, I don't blame Zuzu as a company for these things, but mm -hmm. I think it is good to have it separated. Um, but what I uh, consider even more important is um, not only the name. I think that. Um, Users who w would like to contribute to the open projects um, that are now under the open SUSE umbrella um, should not have to go through the SUSE company. Um, because SUSE as a commercial company has to do many things that, uh, that lock out contributors. I am quite a bit known for representing very young contributors who are locked out by GitHub, but also by the terms of use of the ZUSE company platforms. Mm -hmm. um, and I think if the Open ZUSE community, or the community that is now called Open ZUSE, um, wants to do something to, um, to change this image and to get more emancipated from the ZUSE brand and the ZUSE company, this would be the most important aspect in my, in my point of view. Well, I appreciate your opinion. Thank you for the feedback. We got two up front, Doug. I got, I got the order already planned out, so it's okay. going David back there. Okay. And Neil. Then Neil after that again. Okay, come on. <laughs> so, uh, first off, I think that, that um, you know, comment, the Moby move was really about money and, and their willingness to hold enterprise, yeah, enterprise Linux distributions hostage. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that they failed, rightly so. But, but, the, but what you're talking about is something entirely different, which is to say that we want to uh, collectively create some, some uh, uh, distance, a slight distance, not a, not a large distance. And I don't see SUSE as, as losing any kind of connection to the upstream projects, right? We're, we're still talking about that. But I do see and, and I see tremendous value in the, um, the, um, the alignment with the no notions of like the CNCF Foundation or Fedora, right? Where, mm -hmm. where you have kind of a group of projects. What I am concerned about, and I'm landing the plane now, the, is, the, uh, is that there are many of these projects that are going to land in, in, the, in the community sort of outside of whatever it is that we create. And I, I'll give you some examples. Catello or Candlepin, where they are directly related to a commercial upstream idea or downstream idea, mm -hmm. have an upstream exposure, but don't necessarily, uh, they start to lose track with the, um, with the upstream components of the distribution. Okay. Uh, this kind of this this kind of falls onto your side, but I think I can answer this. So, um, Sousa, actually under Rancher, um, I'll use Coop Warden. 
We created Kubewarden, it is a CNCF project, and we do a lot of the upstream for it. Um, we don't let that go away. The CNCF doesn't allow us to. But Kubewarden is going to be part and parcel of our um, cloud native security platform that will roll into Rancher Prime as a product offering, right? We can't let it go. We still have it as upstream. We do the same thing with K3S, right? So this is the exact same thing with K3S. It's the most downloaded, you know, we still, Chris Wayne's the engineering manager over there. He does a fantastic job. So we are committed to it because on the rancher side of the house, that can't go away. It doesn't, they don't let us, right? So I, I hear your concerns, but with a setup like that, the CNCF puts guidelines. You have to have so many maintainers between co more, multiple companies. You have to have con contributions out. You have to have governance. You have to have, um, a weekly meeting, so there's a lot of things that they put down that for any type of project that needs to happen, and if you don't, CNCF comes over and goes, what are you doing? Stop it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I'm exactly, but if, I like, if you map like the crazy amount of stuff the board currently do now to this kind of concept, you know that kind of model where you know you'd have a new managing body over this new concept, you know they would probably actually be doing less on a daily basis than our board currently have to deal with because you, you know you're dealing with a more federated model where the individual projects are empowered to go do their own thing, and then the management body of this CNCF like bubble would just be, you know, overseeing the projects, making sure the red lines aren't being crossed, stepping in only then. So it's managing body to project relationship rather than the current mess right now where the board is dealing with like, you know, project to SUSE relationships, project to individuals, escalations with, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's, there's an element of, of there's an element of possible fragmentation, um, but I also think that there's actually a freedom in that. You know, I think I think there is a, you know, the ability for a project to better define what it's doing and how it's doing it. If you actually look at OpenSUSE already, we are already pretty fragmented, right? I mean, look at Kiwi; it does things way differently than how other OpenSUSE projects operate. It doesn't even live under the OpenSUSE GitHub project. Same with OBS. Same with OpenQA. Like, we're all kind of doing our own thing anyway. Let's, let's take that as an operating model rather than as an exception to the goal, because that's a bit of a mess right now. So, sorry, I thought I repeated the bit there, but hopefully, yeah. We'll, we'll make sure. Thanks. Yeah, hi. Uh, I, I basically have two reasons why we should not rename Open Study. The, the first reason is basically the history, because there's already for 19 years, because OpenSUSE starts basically as, as that uh, stable distro, so it's originally called just OpenSUSE, and still people ask, what's the, where's OpenSUSE, and we need now explain that there's OpenSUSE Leap and Tumbleweed and so on. So it's already known brand, I, I mean the OpenSUSE part. And the second reason is that, uh, from my experience, the biggest selling point of OpenSUSE Leap uh, for people is that it's backed up by uh, SUSE for critical parts, like getting uh, security updates for SSH, uh, kernel, whatever. So it's main selling point. So when it's called open SUSE, it's like, yeah, it's backed by SUSE f for providing that critical stuff that, yeah, it stay, it's basically gu like guaranteed the critical part works. I'm with you with that. In fact, like, just spitballing an idea, right? Like, Leap is a bit of a weird one anyhow. You know, it's currently under the OpenSUSE umbrella, but we all admit the, contrib the contribution path is awkward, to put it nicely. Um, you know, for something like Leap, I mean, you could almost make an argument if we're doing a bit of rejiggling around with the branding, right? Maybe the right home for Leap is actually the SUSE brand. You know, it's release managed by SUSE. It's based on a SUSE product. SUSE does SUSE Liberty, like, it, yeah, like, why not call it SUSE Leap and have it live there? Like, that, you know, that would play to your idea and actually still work with this with everything else. All right. I would like to add some more general comments on that. 
Um, as a, a word in front, I had during my business life a commercial brand for more than 20 years and I had to defend it and I had to dive a little bit into it. If you want to do a rebranding, and this is what, we're, what you're proposing here, there is always a high risk associated with this. Usually you do that if either the brand is burned or if you're doing something completely different. If the brand is burned, to give you an example, I don't know whether the one or the other can remember the Enron fraud in the beginning of the 2000s. There was a company involved called Arthur Anderson. Mm -hmm. So as they messed it up massively, the name Anderson was burned and the sister company, Anderson Consulting, renamed themselves to Accidentia, uh, Accenture. Sorry. So that was one good reason to do a rebranding. Another one is if you're changing the direction of your business completely. Uh, in Germany, there was a company called Preussack. They were doing steel industry supplies and something like that. And they changed their focus more and more into touristics and they became TUI, TUI which is a, a, a seller of um, yeah, holidays, basically. Is any of the thing of the two things applying to Open Zoos? Is the brand burned, or are we doing anything completely different? I no, think I'm both question, right. I mean, I, I understand the point from 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 Zoos on that. Mm -hmm. um, my personal impression is, if we split this up into smaller project, that's the perfect way into insignificance. So, at um, okay. this point, I agree with Marcus. No, that's fine. Uh, so, I have the lineup. Some of you are. <laughs> I was wondering your, the method. Go ahead. Uh, Sorry, I, I just want to get. I, in many respects, actually, like, I agree with you. I wouldn't be quite so binary of like, there's only those two reasons to rebrand. But let's take the kind of idea of burnt, right? Susan is quite clear what it wants its brand to represent. You know, the left, the right hand side of this column. And Open Sousa doesn't overlap with anything, really, in that left-hand side, of the right-hand side of the column. You know, we're the left side. So, from Sousa's perspective, I can kind of, sit, you know, make a sense that the brand is burnt. You know, every time Open Sousa adds another thing, and like I say, I'm guilty of this, right? You know, it's making the Sousa brand more generic, making it more burnt, making it harder. I, I yeah, you know, maybe not quite as apocalyptic, but from Sousa's perspective, I can kind of see where they're coming from. My turn? Okay. A uh, few points on that. So first, I'm not a big supporter of renaming the project itself. I think OpenSUSE is an established brand. I wouldn't like to change it. Second point, timing is bad. Like, SUSE has been renaming like crazy, like Al, Pestelefo, and like, it seems to be already like joke, in my words. But if you check, can you open news OpenSUSE.org, like on the laptop, just open news OpenSUSE.org. All the last announcements for Leap, Leap Micro. We never see open Susa Leap. We never see open Susa Leap Micro. Like titles are getting long, in the text is getting long. Reality that we are referring to Leap in these articles is Leap. So for me, it feels quite natural. But uh, yeah, I'm a little bit more on the maybe richest proposal out of these two. And part of it feels natural, part of it feels like really bad timing because of what Susa has been doing recently. But then again, maybe if we separate a little bit from Suze, then we will not be subject to renames randomly. I see some benefits too. But it, it's risky, I agree. It's super risky and timing is not perfect. But then we have new major, maybe, you know, what's the best time? Cool. All right, Jeff, then Gertian, then Drew, then... This is the wrong I think room. Neil. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. So I, I started with one comment, but I guess now I have three. Um, <laughs> Go easy. And no, this, this is actually just relative to the discussion that's happening. Um, I think when we start talking about brands like Leap and Tumbleweed and things like that, and you're using the OpenSUSE website as a reference, there's already context. So you don't need to mention the brand at every given moment. I think it's assumed. Um, I, I'll get to that. In terms of rebranding, um, and I'm going to wear my community hat on this, even though you know, I've been part of the community for 20-something years now. Um, I think there are two sides to this. There's the value that the OpenSUSE brand has to the project, which has value, obviously. But I think the name... Has, I argued against the OpenSUSE name when the project began. 
because the biggest barrier I think we have to so like you're, you're talking about maybe using losing users because the brand changes. I think using the OpenSUSE brand has uh, kept away contributors because it feels as if it is a SUSE controlled project, and you know all of these detractors that were up there earlier are valid. That people come in and say, you know, this is a SUSE project. Why should I bother with this? Um, on the other hand, I think the single biggest thing that we can like so rebranding, pick a different name. I don't necessarily have a, an objection to that. Um, I don't think it makes sense to break it up into individual projects because there are linkages. We're kidding ourselves if we think they're, they're not linked. You look at Aeon, MicroOS, Tumbleweed, Leap. I mean, yeah, there's a link between SUSE and Leap, but Tumbleweed is the upstream for both Aeon and Micro. They're not different. Mm -hmm. They're just different presentations. And so I think we don't really want to get too far down into that for exactly the reason that you say. It, it, me, it really just means that there's no central point of organization, there's no central branding, there's no way for, for users to discover one new project from another. So say, you know, you really enjoy Tumbleweed, but you want to experiment with containers, you're what, going to go out and find something completely different that just happens to be under the same umbrella? It doesn't work like that for CNCF projects. Mm -hmm. So. I think we should still keep the individual projects names with an associated brand, but I also think that this is a good opportunity to change the governance of the project. And I don't necessarily think it means pushing governance down to each individual project because, again, they're all linked. But if you look at the other big successful open source projects, the open source Linux distributions, none of them have a board that's structured like this. There's usually like a technical advisory board, there's a community advisory board, there's a number of different structures where the, 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 the processes are established. And I think between feeling like OpenSUSE is controlled by SUSE and having a pretty opaque governance process, we're keeping a lot of contributors away. And that's the single biggest barrier to the project growing in general, not just in contributors, but if we have more contributors, we get more users. Thank you. Uh, for a large part, I was going to say what Jeff said. Um, I do not object against renaming the project. Uh, it's, uh, as for somebody that's been in the community for 20 years, on a daily basis, I get confronted with the fact that people do not know what OpenSUSE is, they think. It's a kind of free spin-off of SUSE, which it's not. It's a lot more than that. And this would be a way to get that misperception out of the way. Um, there's another thing about rebranding Axel. Uh, Mr. Elon Musk, he rebranded Twitter. Not, not yet. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, I, I do agree, and I would like us to drop open SUSE first. Nobody knows how to write it. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's very true. S second, like I said, it has the name SUSE in it, and it's not SUSE. Some people even post it on the forums. I don't see how I can pay my subscription. No, because they downloaded OpenSUSE instead of SUSE. Uh, get, get that out of the way, make it more clear. Uh, whether we should not have a governing organization, somehow of governing umbrella, mm -hmm. I don't think it's good not to have one. It would go the same way uh, as we have it with all our different platforms that they each have their own rules, and there is no uh, bigger community around it anymore. It, it would require that the people in the projects talk to the other projects, and otherwise it's also going to mean that we're going to do a lot of extra work. Well, thank you. So I am going to extend this just for five more minutes, uh, so we'll delay the talks that are behind us, because uh, we do have a break, and then we can uh, just extend this because that's what that's you're why it was programmed this way. Yeah? You're so. the boss. 
I've always considered the uh, OpenSUSE naming problematic, and I figured this was only a matter of time. And uh, if, if SUSE owns the marks, if they, if, if they own OpenSUSE name, if they want to say, hey, Go your own way? That's cool. What? That's not necessarily what no. they're saying. We're not no. saying open source to go their own way. That's not what I'm, we're saying. I'm we're saying, still saying we're committed to supporting it. We're still committed to supporting the mark, right? Because as an organization, defending your trademark has to be done in each country. It's not I, something. I get it. I get it. My, my point is it's problematic for them, and mm -hmm. I get it, and I don't have a problem with them saying, you know, do something else. I like the idea of us having a different brand. I think OpenSUSE is on an ups upswing right now, and I don't think we, lo we are going to lose that much attention by a rebrand because of that upswing. And I would argue that upswing, I think, might be some of the cause for SUSE wanting to drive away from this because we're more popular now and if we get more popular than Sousa and we have the brand, that's where it becomes really problematic for them. I get it. But I think we should consider instead of breaking things out into their own sort of branded name, having some sort of hybrid structure where we have that overarching brand has an identity of its own and can stand on its own and where projects uh, can they want to be more autonomous? They're a Geekos affiliated pro program or project or whatever, and so it's not. You have the the core stuff be core to the umbrella organization, and then where uh, in the cases where uh, segments of the community can be a little bit more autonomous, they have the the right to do so. I think. I don't think there's, there's many ways for us to, to, to screw things up by keeping the name or not keeping the name. It, I don't think it's going to matter that much, but I think structuring it in a way uh, that makes us lose sight of community and our connections, I think that's, that's not good uh, optics. Well said. Thank you. I'm going to give you one minute, Neil, and then I'm going to give Pancor one minute, and, and I'm not sure your name, but... So, uh, overall, uh, I'm going to say that this is... I, I am 100% in favor of changing the bloody name, because, uh, you know, being in the U.S. and trying to advocate for OpenSUSE is really f***ing hard. It is, it is really hard, because there is, you know, you know, other people here said that there's like some super positive brand association with SUSE. But I can tell you that from my experience in the US side, it's pretty much the opposite. People laugh at my face when I talk about, when I try to talk about SUSE or open SUSE positively. And I think a big part of the, and again, there's these other brand questions of like, ah, oh, am, I, am I just, you know, giving crap to SUSE for free or whatever? And I really don't like having to deal with those conversations over and over and over and over. So I would be really in favor of having a new brand, but connecting all the projects to it, like kind of like what we do now, maybe just with some smarter governance. Awesome. Thank you, Neil. Yes, very quick. Uh, I was just wondering, because a lot of people is connecting the name to the amount of contributors. Like, with Susie on the name, we will we are scaring people or we get more contributors or less. I believe we are heavily overestimating the, the relevance of the name for that. We are probably getting uh, fewer uh, contributors for many other reasons we still inspect and not because of the name. I don't think the name is something that will actually make people devote their time to one project or the other. And probably it's just simply that there are more and more Linux distributions nowadays, so it's a, it's a matter of offer and demand, and also more and more free software projects. So in that regard, maybe the, the brand has some value, because we are one of the older distributions, and we are an old community. So yeah, maybe in, in a sea full of new brands, new projects, new community, maybe losing the brand is not the smartest. But 
whatever. We are overestimating the, the relevance of the name, in my opinion. All right, thank you. So the way I see it is that keeping the name and changing the name or getting rid of a general name both has advantages and disadvantages. What I see is that I ask myself what value OpenSUSE brings. Like when I say I use OpenSUSE, what does that really mean? Tumbleweed is something completely different from Leap and completely different from Aeon. So when I say, why don't you use OpenSUSE, I first have to tell them, well, yeah, they have like different uh, products and I have to explain what each of them does and then they're not interested anymore. So having an yeah, like unique name for each product, I think could really improve things here. Mm -hmm. Also, I saw that with the competition for the new logos that the community logically tried to have similar logos for each of the products. And I also tried to vote on things that look kind of similarly because they all have the same brand. But that also doesn't really make sense because why is that necessary? Tumbleweed is still something different from Leap. Why do they need a logo that is similar? Um, okay, so um, I think it would be really useful if the projects on their own had like some kind of marketing team that could announce new things without having to rely on the brand OpenSUSE doing that and having still an umbrella over them mm -hmm. so they could uh, say okay here look we have a similar project maybe that fits you better and they would have their own community and each project could target their users better and wouldn't have to uh, um, well ask OpenSUSE yeah okay can we do that now how could we um, show ourselves to the outside I think that would be really helpful. Awesome thank you. So we do have th thank you we have some workshops planned, or meetups planned afterwards, so please look on the schedule and uh, participate, because that's what they're there for. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.